Hello class, welcome to the second lecture on matrices. We are going to be getting out the calculator today and figuring out what in the world we even invented matrices for. What is the usefulness of these? And there's actually quite a lot to matrices, so don't feel like you understand all of them just by the end of this. I'm just showing you a few uses. There is an entire class, an entire series of classes in college called Linear Algebra, which is about matrices and what they mean and how they can be used. And there are a lot more things to them than what we're going to cover right here. But what we are going to talk about today is using matrices to solve systems of equations and how that works and how the calculator can do it for you. So this is the real secret sauce. This is the thing that makes uh, physics and a lot of other kinds of uh, systems of equations situ situations very, very easy and straightforward and solvable in a snap. So one of the things that you might encounter a lot in uh, solving real world situations is that you know that there's a mix over here and a mix over there and a mix over there and somehow they're all dealing with the same thing but you've only got pieces of the information at any given time. So we might know that 2x uh, is the same as 4 plus 3y. We might know that x plus 2y is equal to 3z and we might know that 4x plus 2z is equal to 3 plus y. And if you rearrange the pieces of that, you end up with these three uh, equations that uh, can be sorted out very, very nicely. Now, you'll notice here, obviously, this is the matrix in a matrix section. So I've kept things very, very neat and orderly. I've got the x's, the y's, the z's, the equal signs, and the plain numbers all laid out in a very, very schematic fashion. I'm trying really hard to make it visually obvious to you, this uh, lack of uh, z up there in the first equation um, is something that you really need to notice and not be fooled by. This is something that the Algebra 2 students often fail to notice and it's what gets them in a heap of trouble. So if we had to do this the old-fashioned way, where you had to solve this by hand, what would you do? What are the things that you're allowed to do if you're trying to solve this by elimination? Well, you can add one row to the next. You, you can multiply the rows before you add them. It doesn't matter what order they are in. And you can just multiply a row. You know, if you had everything was even, then you would just divide that whole uh, row by two. So these uh, rules here, where order doesn't matter, you can multiply any line by any number, except zero and you can add lines together, that these rules are something that a calculator, a machine, can follow very, very easily. So these are not, these are tedious for humans to do, but they're perfect for machines. Anytime you can break a problem down into simple rules and simple steps, then it's definitely time to bring in the machines. So here you can see I've taken those same uh, three uh, equations and I've said this is a system and I've kept that order that we talked about and uh, of having an X column, a Y column, a Z column, and a numbers column in that order. And now that's going to help me build some matrices out of it. So one thing you can do is you can just take all the coefficients and all the variables and separate them out. So you remember when we do the, uh, the matrix chop that we, we have this um, ability to sort of pull something that is vertical and turn it into something that is horizontal. So I can pull out the x, the y, and the z out of each of these equations and make them turn into a column. And they'll also have a column then of numbers, constants at the end. So look at this, try to picture what the coefficients are. What are the things that x and y and z are being multiplied by in each case? So I hope you can see, maybe rewind the video, go back and forth between these here, go back and forth, is to see that that 0, z, is going to be in the upper right corner of our coefficient matrix. And then our variables are going to get splashed across. They're going to get turned from being vertical to being horizontal. And this set of matrices right here is the same thing as that system of equations that we had. So what this means now is that we can put this in our calculator and solve for x and y and z by simply solving matrix equations. 
So let's get out the calculator and do exactly that. Let's take this uh, matrix uh, system of equations here and solve it using our calculator. So I need a calculator here. Now, your calculator may be different than mine. This is an uh, emulator of an 84 silver, but I think this 84 CEs and others are different. For me, you can see that the word matrix is second inverse, uh, but I think some calculators have a dedicated matrix button, so that may be different for you. Your mileage may vary. So now within the matrix menu on the calculator, there are three different options. We can use the name of any given matrix in an equation. We can do math on any given matrix. Uh, or we can manually type in matrices for ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enter matrix A here. And I'm editing matrix A. And the first thing it wants to know is the size. So matrix A was a 3 by 3. And the numbers were 2, negative 3, 0, 1, 2, negative 3, 4, negative 1, 2. Okay. Now notice, I'm typing in the number and then pressing enter, and that auto advances me to the next spot. But there's nowhere to auto advance after the last number. So your cursor is there on the number 2. And if you start doing other things, like saying multiply by another matrix and crazy stuff like that, it will put all of that information in as the last entry of your matrix, unless you get out. So Notice where you are. Be cognizant of where your cursor is on your calculator. So I quit back to the prompt, and now it's always a good idea to double check yourself. You're going to get all manner of rotten decimals and things when you don't check to see, did I type that in right? So I'm going to go back to the name menu, and I'm just going to type in matrix name A at the prompt and double check myself. 2, negative 3, 0, 1, 2, negative 3, 4, negative 1, 2. Looks like I entered that correctly. Okay, so now continuing our matrix equation, I need an equation for uh, this constant matrix, all the numbers there. So that is a 3 by 1 with 4, 0, and 3 in it, like that. And again, I like to double check myself because I make mistakes, but there it is. All right, so I've got matrix A and B. So what we've done now is we've entered in the calculator. That one is matrix A. We're just going to keep calling this X, Y, Z. It is the unknown. It's matrix X. It's what we're looking for. And then we're going to try to solve that that is equal to matrix B. Uh-oh. We said last time there is no division. If these were just numbers, then I would be able to simply divide both sides by matrix A. But there is no such thing. There is no matrix division. What are we going to do? Well, fortunately for us, there is an opposite of division. I mean, an opposite of multiplication, but it's not division. Every matrix, except 0, has something that will undo it. Well. What would that even mean? How would you know that you've undone multiplication? Well, you know that there is some number that when you multiply it by 3, that you get 1, right? That the, the, the trick to see if multiplication has worked is, uh, does it equal 1? That number, of course, is a third. It's the opposite of 3 for multiplication. The opposite of 3 for addition is negative 3. But every kind of operator we do in math, typically, has an undo, an opposite. And the opposite of multiply is divide or multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. So what that means is that we could call this 3 to the 1 times 3 to the negative 1 uh, equals positive 1, the proof that we've done the, uh, the undone the multiplication, right? If you multiplied by 3 and then you multiplied by a third, you'd end up back where you started. So this is the trick that we need to find some sort of analogous situation for that with a matrix. We need to find some way to have the matrix that when I multiply A by this, this inverse of A, I get 1. Well, wait a minute. What is 1 for a matrix? What is the identity of multiplication for matrices? 
Well, this, this is, turns out to be a rather tricky thing. And rather than taking you through all of that, we're ju I'm just trying to introduce you to matrices here. You can take linear algebra in college. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that a matrix 1, the identity, identity, is equal to a square matrix with 1s on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So the identity matrix, it has to be square, and it has to have, so that's, it, it must be square. It must have ones on the diagonal, diagonal, and then zeros everywhere else, okay? So you can have an identity matrix, a one matrix of any size, as long as it's a square. So um, since our A is a 3 by 3, a square matrix of uh, size 3, then that means that the identity for 3 by 3s is we need 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That that is the identity matrix for a 3 by 3. Now, finding the inverse of some matrix, something that when we multiply A by A inverse, that we get the identity can be very tricky and often results, more, vast majority of the time, results in horrific decimals. So I'm not going to make you do that. I'm saying you can totally do that with the calculator. You just need to know how to enter that in your calculator. And if you're curious, um, we would say that, let's see, let's see what it is here. Let's say um, matrix named A inverse. I'll bet it's going to be terrible decimals. Yeah. That's horrible, horrible decimals. Is it any better in fractions? Yeah, it's still, it's still pretty wretched. All 44ths and 20 seconds. That's very nasty. So the point is, you're typically only going to have to find inverses by using that little exponent negative 1 button, the undo of matrix A. And in this case, coming back to our equation, what we made was we said we knew that matrix A times the uh, variable matrix was equal to matrix B. So if I want to get rid of A, if I want A to not be being multiplied against X, I'm going to need to multiply by A inverse. And I don't have many choices. I don't have any choices about where I can do that. I can't multiply by A inverse to the right of X, then it won't cancel, then it's not touching X. So I've got to not do it there. I have to do it on the left of matrix A. Now remember, matrix multiplication is not commutative. It matters which side you do it on. So if I multiply the left side of my equation on the left by A inverse, I have to multiply on the left on the right side of my equation. See how tricky this can get to be? So the point is, I multiplied by A inverse over on this side. I have to do it over here on this side as well. If I, if I tried to do A inverse over here, I will get terrible decimals and I'll know that I've screwed up because if I multiplied on the left side once, I need to do that on both of parts of my equation. So always remember, matrix multiplication order matters, okay? So now what this is going to do for me, the reason that this is so awesome, is that these two are going to cancel. They're going to make the identity matrix, the 1, and that's being multiplied against x. So x equals a inverse times b. And the identity matrix multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't change what I am. So that's going to get me an equation that now works. So that is one way that we can solve matrix equations. You take your uh, systems of equations, you turn them into a coefficient matrix, a variable matrix, and a constant matrix, and then you solve using inverses. So it's important that we know where inverses are in the calculator. It's important that we know um, how to make the calculator do it for us. But most of the time, finding an inverse is going to be rotten decimals and not something you want to have to try to do by hand. They'll teach you how to do it by hand in linear algebra, but I'm not going to waste your time with that. What is even better than using inverses to solve uh, a system of equations is using RREF, which stands for Reduced 
rho echelon form. Let me write that down since that's a bunch of unusual words. Reduced rho echelon form. Okay, what is that? What is RREF? Well, RREF is uh, when we take a uh, group of uh, a, a, a matrix and we get it to be looking like the identity matrix as much as possible. Where you add, so those rules that we mentioned before of adding one row to the next, multiplying one row and, or another and then adding them, and then swapping places of things, that when we try to do this process of elimination, um, that we are attempting to make a matrix look as much like the identity matrix as we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our systems of equations and our constant matrix and we're going to augment, this just means add to, supplement, our constant matrix with, a, uh, with the constant matrix. We're just going to tack it on to the right side. So here you can see there's that same system of equations. There's that A that I had of all my constant uh, coefficients. And then I've drawn a line here just so you can see where I added on, where I augmented the constant matrix off to the side. So if you bring that in and just tack that on to the left side, you have an augmented matrix. And then if you do um, Gaussian elimination, then you can get the answer. And again, the calculator will do this for us. So what is the calculator doing? It's trying to make the identity matrix. It's trying to make a diagonal there. There's the sort of stair step case where you can see the, the diagonal. And it's trying to make zeros below that, OK? So ones on the diagonal is what we're trying to get. So let's do one here. And this one better work and not be terrible decimals. We've got um, this equation here. And I'm going to turn this right into an augmented matrix. We've got 1 and negative 6 and 5 and 12 as our coefficients. We've got 14 and 28 as our constants. And that is our augmented matrix. You can see where we augmented the constants off to the side of the coefficients. So what are we going to do? We're going to have the calculator for us figure out how this what would happen to this matrix if we try to get it into the identity form? What's going to happen if we add a copy of this row to that row and multiply this row by something and then add them and then switch places and things if we try to force it to do this? What's going to happen? I don't know what these numbers are going to be over here. If we take this matrix, this augmented matrix, and we put it into row reduced echelon form. So let's go over into the calculator. And let's say that matrix edit, I want to put into matrix D a 2 by 3 with 1 and negative 6 and 14 and 5, oops, uh oh, uh, delete, delete, uh, 5 and 12 and 28. OK, so now matrix D is my augmented matrix. And back at the prompt, I need to do matrix math. So if you scroll all the way down here to choice number B, B is not a number, but the uh, 10th, 11th, 12th choice is RREF on something. Now, right above that, don't get confused, is REF. On some exams and some linear algebra classes, they will make you do REF form by hand, which is a royal pain. But um, the calculator can go full tilt for you and do RREF. Uh, reduced row echelon form, and that's what we want to have it do. We want it to do this elimination process on the matrix named D. Okay, so now if we do that, and it went through all the processes of adding this row to that row and that row to this row and all that kind of math for us, it's arithmetic. We end up with 8 and negative 1. And what that means now is that the answers are for x is 8 and y is negative 1, which is probably better said as the point 8 comma negative 1, that that is the solution to our systems of equations. That if we graphed these two lines, put them in a graph where we would see that they hit each other at 8, negative 1, that the point x is equal to 8, y is equal to negative 1 works in both systems, both equations, it's the answer to the system. 
So you might say, well, I could have done that by hand. That wouldn't have been too bad to just make two graphs. But of course, as we get going with the number of variables and the number of equations, things can get really tricky. So I'm not going to follow my slide here. I'm not going to do this by hand. I'm going to do this one in the calculator as well. I'm going to say 2, 1, negative 1, 10, negative 2, negative 2, negative 6, 30, 4, 0, 6, negative 10, that if I put all that into the calculator and I RREF it, it's going to come back with something that's got 1s on the diagonal, zeros everywhere else, except it's going to give me what x and y and z are equal to. So if I go into the calculator and I say second matrix edit, and I edit matrix C to be a 3 by 4 with entries 2, 1, negative 1, 10, negative 2, negative 2, negative 6, 30, 4, 0, 6, negative 10. And I double check myself by saying matrix name C. And that looks to be exactly right. And now if I do matrix math, and I'm going to go up there was the quicker way to get to RREF, and I want to do that on matrix name C, then we can see that the answer to this systems of equations, bam, is 5, 5, negative 5, negative 5. That that x and y and z coordinate will get us what we want out of this whole system of equations. So I hope you can see how incredibly powerful RREF is. That this is an amazing, amazing tool to get you uh, the, uh, the system of equations answer instantaneously. However many unknowns you have. If you have four equations, four unknowns, five equations, five unknowns, any of that can be solved with a calculator doing RREF for you instantly. So, takeaways. Systems of equations, rip off the coefficients, rip off the constants, keep it all neat, nice, and separated like a matrix, all nice and organized, and then use RREF, not REF. You gotta have two R's, uh, reduced row echelon form, and the calculator will solve it for you.